has been outstanding. He hasn't looked like missing. No, absolutely sensational. And uh, big frame coming up. Thank you. And we Quiet always say, as my fifty shouts come on, Mark to husband Selby Mark, to break. a frame to take you over the winning line can always be the hardest one of all. the match time, just uh, 10 minutes short of 11 hours. <coughs> Mark semi-final was just over 12 hours. As Ronnie O'Sullivan got something left in the tank. Said, is there anything left in the tank? He's pulled out a little gem there, I can tell you. <coughs> Just a little congested around the black spot area there, the way the reds are sitting. Has he found the gap? Has he found the gap? You betcha. I think that looks to be absolutely Six. inch perfect. The red just above the black to stun it into the right corner. He's just checking to see if the red just above it will go into the left corner after this red and the black. Seven. Won't be able to play on that one red now, so I have to play a little cannon here. You have to play with a lot of pace. The question is, is it just a case of rolling this red in and being on the black? He's down quick, he must like the angle. Oh, he's, he's got a big bounce 15. there, I think. Or did he just play that a little too quickly? I wouldn't mind another look at that to see. Let's have a look. Uh, I think he just hit it a little hard anyway. Maybe just rushed that one slightly. Be disappointed. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 15. It was a good opening red. Now, is there a gap between these reds? Mark Selby's not looked yet. There's a red right at the bottom of this bunch. I think there's a gap where he can get to the potting angle of this red. And if he can, he can play it as a shot for nothing. Quite an aggressive safety there from Ronnie. Opening up the reds. Got a good cue ball. Bit of pressure on the safety here for Mark at first glance. be very tight as to whether he can get to the red he was looking at. And even then, he's got to find the gap back down the table. Well, let's have a look. Is it the red just behind the pink? 
and will he miss the in off? He's pretty good at picking out these type of shots, but he's got to be very precise with this. And there you see it. It looked as if he was going to flip one. Now then, the red's over the pocket. There's a possibility of planting another red onto it to get good position. Yeah, I think he's got to play one red onto the other. And if the pocket doesn't clear, he'll be thinking, I'll have a chance of the pink into the left middle. He's not had a look at that yet, but that's what his thought should be, because if he plays this red, then he's not certain to clear the pocket for the black. He's not certain to clear the pocket for the black. One. Well, is he on the blue? That's the question. If not, it's going to have to be the green and then try and get that red that you said could block the pocket, John. Now clear that pocket. Just got to find the gap between the black and the red for the black in the same pocket. Oh, not quite found it. Five. You'll be disappointed with that positional shot. He played it with lots of check side. I, like you, John, thought he would just go past the red the other side. And he thought, if I can get enough check side, I'll be OK. This is a thin snick. It's there, but look where the cue ball's going. <laughs> Little wry smile there, but he's not, he's not finished yet, that's for sure. What a tremendous pot that was. Eleven. And he's on the yellow, and perfectly on the yellow. <clears throat> Fighting hard to keep this visit going. It's been anything but straightforward so far, and he's a good kiss on the pink. <coughs> Looking at his body language. 13. Is he on this red? Well, he had to swerve to pop that and played it absolutely 14. delightfully. I mean, that looked an easy shot, but he had to bend it around the red, and I can't tell you how difficult that was. That would help if that red would pot in the middle of that little bunch of four. He's thinking two or three shots ahead. Twenty one. The red might be tight, but Tell you what, the plant's not too far away. 28. JV. Yeah, but you won't want to be playing from where the cue ball is at the moment. That plant is on, but he needs to be a lot higher up. So this red really important to get a nice angle on the blue. He doesn't want to be cannoning into <laughs> these four reds because it could go wrong. Just drop the blue in. There's enough distance between these two balls that the plant can be made and shouldn't be missed. If you play the cannon, it can go wrong. He's got a 44-point lead. This blue will put him 49 points in front with just 75 remaining. Decided to play the cannon, but it's OK. It's worked out absolutely and perfect. 34. Just thinking, he thought there maybe that the other red might just be slightly in the way of the plant, and that's why he played the split. But didn't he play that well? Well, sure. 35. 
why he has won five world titles. I mean, back right against the wall, and he's produced this. But what's he done there? The pink's back on its spot. Now, that was a little lapse in concentration. 41. And he was only a couple of pots away from securing the frame. Throws the rest on the table in disgust. Now, normally when he's uh, suffered a poor positional shot, he's really concentrating on the safety. It's not letting him affect his next shot. Can he produce a good safety? Thank you. Thanks. Good Brilliant. safety. Brilliant. Well played. 21. Hit his disappointment. Didn't let it affect the next shot. Tell you what, it's not only a good safety, it's a snooker. The only red he can see is the one next to the green, so that's as good as the snooker. He's having to bend this round the black. Now, this would be a terrific safety shot if he gets this back down the table. <coughs> oh, that's covered the other red, you know. He's had a bit of a result, that red, coming next to the pink. I don't think he can get through to the potting angle. Well, he could, because he missed it the other side of the pocket. Well, the red has finished close enough to, to the bought cushion to make this a very difficult pot. And if you look at the situation of the other four reds, 56 is a big advantage. But a terrific pot. Now, needs that cue ball to slow. What? It hasn't done. Wrong side of the blue. I think maybe the red, the, just the left of the pink, may possibly go at the left corner, but... Well, does it. And being on the blue the way he is, he can't get good on the red. Well, he's looking to see if he can find an angle around missing the brown and the black to get to that red. And here it comes. He's found the gap. In fact, the cannon might work out. Well, wow, have a look at that shot. What a shot he's Six. pulled out there. You won't see a better shot than that. To create that top spin from that position was unbelievable. Seven. Yeah, an amazing shot. And you saw the cue ball jump, but then all that top spin kicked in and hit this as sweet as a nut, which is more than I can say about his last shot. <coughs> Look at the white, the way it jumps before the top spin takes effect. He wanted to be on a different angle on the black than this. <coughs> but he's cueing, he's getting through the cue ball at this very tense moment when you can get a bit of tension in the arm. 14. Well, I think Vicky will be more tense than Mark, but he needed the black back on its spot to give himself a chance to get an angle to move the reds. That's why he played for the black previously, so he's still 15. thinking very straight. And what a key shot this is coming up. Now... How hard does he hit this? Does he try and develop the two reds and the green? Where's that cue ball? Oh, this crucible 22. crowd, you can cut the atmosphere with a knife. Thirty-four behind, forty-three remaining. That red still tied up with the green. Well, maybe I'd run out of bringing that red into play. Took his eye off the pot, but it's a tough pot anyway. I have to say, a little bit unlucky when he played the black and cannon the reds. Could have expected something easier than that. Where's the cue ball? Where is that cue ball? Foul. Mark Selby, four. Well, 
there's the difference, 30 behind. Weighing the situation up, Ronnie not looking at the moment. It's getting hot out there. The temperature is rising. Carefully doesn't send this red into a potable position past the black. And he played it onto the black. Doesn't matter about canning the blue. The main part of that shot was the red ball. white down behind that blue. He's gone over to the right side of the table, which was a little surprising because this red will pass the pink and it's a bit of a free shot. And just have a little think about this. If he pots this red and he doesn't drop on a colour, he could put Ronnie in a very difficult snooker. It's there. Come on. He's on the blue, so he can try and disturb that red, but it would have to be absolutely spot on. Well, decision time. Well, I've got to be honest with you, Dennis. If it wasn't for the misrule, there wouldn't be a decision to make. You'd play the blue. But Mark may be thinking, as you thought, if I get him snooker behind the brown, I make it a very hard snooker to hit, and I can close the gap with foul four points. All I was thinking was it's, well, it's a tough we won. snooker to get out of, but the way he's played it, it's not tough to get out of. No, he needed to cover this one cushion escape. And he's got the red. Well played. I mean, personally, I would have taken the blue on and tried the cannon. Mark thought about it. See, Ronnie can get past the pink and he'll use the green to leave the cue ball at this end. He didn't want that red to be so close to the pocket, though. Now, this is tough, and if he pots at the white, it'll go towards the left middle pocket, you would think. Oh, and where's the cue ball? So Ronnie comes to the table, 29 points in front, just needing the red to go 30 points in front. That red that looked as though it had dropped twice. Take the opportunity. 
the situation. Mark Selby, 29 points behind, 35 remaining. Ronnie put a little trace of left-hand side on that, and it seemed to swing it into the red. But this is a chance. If it goes in, he'd be on the black, you would feel. It's there. Is he on the black? One. It's just rolling and rolling. Is he on the black? I think he is. The yellow won't pass the blue, though. So there's a lot black ball. to be played for here. Eight. 21 behind. He's got an angle to pot this. And he can go around the back of the blue. And Vicky, well, what is she feeling like inside? Oh, he's flicked the blue, but what a flick. Look where he's finished up. Ten. And that has given him a chance because he's got an angle on the green, and I'm not making this green out to be easy, but he can stun. Well, he's looking to see whether Brown passes the blue, but there's a gap in between the black and pink to go up the left-hand side of the table for the brown. If this green goes in, this could be his chance. Well, it obviously passes the blue. So, Mark Selby, you need these four colours. Well, what a clearance this would be. The green was outstanding to get up for the brown. <laughs> this looks good. It looks very good. Two more pots. 22. And what a comeback this will be. Just the black 20. for a famous, famous victory. Vicky is praying. one of the best comebacks I've seen for many, many years, and he wins the World Championship for the very first time. He's the 2014 Dapabet World Snooker Champion. Well done, Mark Selby. Congratulations to all the family.